Welcome to another uh, episode of Clean Tech Gig. I have a true pleasure to have with me uh, Mr. Will Hitchcock, the CEO, Managing Director of Above Survey. Uh, so we're going to have a very interesting discussion with Will, chatting about what is new in our industry, um, what is going on with drone surveys, how do we handle data, and obviously we are in the Soren Storage Live, which is the event in the UK to be uh, in the solar industry. So Will, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Uh, always a pleasure, uh, always insightful when I speak yeah. with you. So to start with, tell us a bit about Above Survey. Okay, so um, Above Surveying uh, is an is a aerial inspection and analytics company for the solar industry. So we set up uh, four years ago, identified a problem in the market where you, how do you do consistent aerial thermography to an IEC standard. Um, so we've developed a methodology and an offering to deliver that. But now we've also got our own software platform that can present inspection data and test data, not just from the drone, but from other sources. So we're sort of software and inspection. How come you came on with that idea to, to, to start above survey? How does it you know, how does it connect with your personal interest, perhaps? So, I've got a passion for renewables. I like things that fly. And I, my previous life was software engineering. So, they all came together. When I was uh, building assets during 2014 and 15, um, we used uh, drones for construction monitoring. And it was just a logical extension to start looking at doing aerial thermography. Um, and we developed our own methodology and really string monitoring alone doesn't give a true picture of that asset's health. Um, the drone and thermography does give a, a layer of insight that there is no other way of doing. Um, so it, it, it commanded instant value in the market. I remember back in the day when, we, when, when you started in Milan and you did your first presentation in yeah. Milan, yeah. You know, demonstrating a new way of doing uh, you know, infrared tests yeah. uh, and checks. Now everybody was a bit skeptical yeah. about the idea. Gimmicky how do you find? How do you, how do you feel like four years, three, four years after? Well, it's sort of what was interesting back then was it was sort of deemed a bit of a gimmick um, and a kind of an, an interesting thing. But actually, what we did to start to penetrate the market was do a free uh, inspection of one megawatt of an asset, um, and every single time we did it, every single one of those people turned into clients because we exposed things that they were unaware of. Um, so it, it really did catalyze an industry. And now these services are, are part of EPC contracts for commissioning milestones. And most of our clients now are asset managers where they're having these inspections done every year or every two years. So it's, it's now become a thing that the industry just needs to embrace. But are you a drone company or your data company? Because there is a bit of a... Yeah. So there's think, a bit of involvement here as well. Yeah. So, so on the software, the, the, the key thing that we managed to do was not only collect data accurately across 100% of your modules, but also our own software to present those results. And that's really key because it's, it's all well and good being given a whole load of information. It's how you can distill it and then digest it. So our software has been developed over the last four years and it, we now call it the inspection hub and we're able to suck in electroluminescence, imagery, flash tests, IV curves, other data, um, which really does complement the aerial inspection data, as well as stand on its own two feet. But we do see a, a gap in the market. So much money is, in, is being spent on inspections and testing um, every year, and it, it materializes as PDFs, spreadsheets, emails, Bob's phone, Fred's email account, Word documents, and there's no way of bringing that together into a meaningful sort of point. And I think that's something that we've really cracked with our portal. So what is, what is that you do differently from other operators, you think? Is it, is it the, the data element and this data consolidation that, that you bring to your clients? Or is it something more? So it's, it's bringing more insight. So the more you do, the more insight you can surface to your clients in trending, averages, and that kind of stuff. So we've got, you know, we, we use partner operators to do our flying in other territories, but the real magic is how we then interpret that data and present it to the board, to, to our clients. Um, and that's really the value bit. 
So tell us a bit about you, the, the scope. I mean, you start on the perhaps pre-development phase and go all the way to, you know, long operational uh, contracts. Yeah. So. So we can start operating with a developer from a topographical study. So we have the drone equipment that can do topo photogrammetry for 3D modeling and all that kind of stuff. And that's always a good starting point with a new asset. asset. Um, and then that leads into the commissioning milestone testing. So we always advocate doing a, dr a drone inspection at, at um, PAC and at FAC, rather than just leaving it to the end of two years. Do it, do it in the middle of the project and at the end. Um, secondary market transactions. You've got to do some quick technical due diligence if you're buying an asset. The easiest way to get a view on the, on the health of those modules is using, using a drone inspection. So there's many points of, of, of touch with a client, but ideally from the beginning, from PAC, is, 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 is a useful point. Well, allow me, allow me to take you on a different path a bit. You started your company on your own. Yeah. Tell, us, tell us where you are now and how your entrepreneurial journey has been. Okay, so yeah. Um, an idea in 2015, always ask yourself, why hasn't someone else done it? Um, and then if, if you just stop at that point, assuming someone has, then you would never do anything. But this was one of those things where it felt like there was a, there was a time and a point for this. And I think the UK market was, was ripe for this kind of service. Um, and then it's a question of, of, of how you develop your vision and how you sell those services. We've had a lot of support from Innovate UK. So through the grant system, we've worked with uh, two universities we're still working with. So Loughborough, Crest, and the, the University of Essex. Um, so those, those routes are really good to develop your tech with, without making huge um, financial outlay. You get a lot of support from the universities, but really it's just, graft of building relationships with, with asset managers and asset owners and just building your brand, reputation, holding a vision of what your, what your company's all about. Um, so we started in 2016 really trading commercially in the UK and now we're operating in uh, Portugal, in France, Mexico, the Netherlands, Spain, Italy, Australia, the US through our partnership network. So. Yeah, it's just, it's an exciting journey. So you've yeah. organically grown the company from zero to approximately eight, nine hundred thousand, a million a year, yeah, something like, something that, like yeah. that. And now, are you, are you raising money now? Yeah, we're, we're doing a round of investment at the moment. Um, and we're, we're seeking investment for two main areas. One is business development uh, outside of the UK to have the equivalent of the UK BD team out in the other territories um, and marketing. And then on the tech. We need to scale up our tech team. So it's just about moving with the market. The market is growing at such a pace that to keep your kind of position in the market and, and, the, and the, the window of opportunity that we created for ourselves, we need to just inject some. Have you specialized yourself in solar alone or have you ventured into other renewable technologies? Yeah, so we have specialized in solar and that's because that's my bread and butter and it's what I understand. Um, it won't be long before we have to start considering the wind assets it's a completely different challenge with with the inspection approach and how you handle data but a lot of our clients own both wind and solar assets um, and so there's a certain uh, you know you've, you've already got those relationships in place so it's an inevitability at the moment it's just held back by our capacity to take on another another industry I would really value your opinion on two things one I would like your 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 opinion on the UK market on the UK solar market how yeah. do you see the market developing from now on do you think that brexit will have an impact for example yeah. and then I would love your your insight also on, on, on some spot European markets yeah so so the UK market is starting to come back on the utility scale um, so a number of our clients are building new assets, whether that be with storage or PPAs, but the, the, the financial model is different, so it's going to be more sustainable growth. But it's definitely happening. Obviously, module prices have come down something like 80% in 10 years, so that's a big factor. So the UK market is, is gradually growing back and, and, and leading on storage, which is going to help. Uh, some of the other territories, so Renaissance in Spain, bigger assets being built. We've got a number of clients who are developing out there. Um, and in Italy, you're seeing consolidation. So secondary market is busy in Italy. 
Um, and I think next year is going to be even busier for that consolidation. Um, but there's no denying that with the climate emergency and the need for renewables, that you've just got to see an uptick of, of, of an order of magnitude um, to, to, to build the amount of renewable energy that we need out there. So I think the future for solar is incredibly positive. It's bright. Yeah, absolutely. But absolutely. where is the catch? What do we need to do differently as an industry to accelerate that? Because I always say that the technology to stop climate change or reverse climate change is here. We don't have to somehow you know, discover something in the future. It's not a futuristic technology. We, yeah. can, we have the technology now. But is it, is it about policies? Is it about bringing specific networks together? Is it about scale? Is it about, you know, the oil and gas giants taking yeah. a, a serious, uh, you know, investment uh, stake into, into what we do? Yeah, so I think it's a mixture of all of those things. So in the UK, it's predominantly around planning and grid. Um, and that's, you know, a policy thing that needs to just be unblocked. Um, seeing some of the big oil companies now investing in, in solar is, you know, is a really telling sign. So I think the momentum is, is there and the things will change. But like, like anything, when it's infrastructure, critical infrastructure like the grid and, and, and making the grid accept this, this variable um, generation, that, that, that takes time to fix. Um, and we just need to get as quick as we can at, at doing it. I also think solar, can, you know, we're still competing with fossil fuels to an extent. There's still, there's still subsidization of that industry, whether it be through tax breaks or whatever. And there's also a very strong lobby. So I think there's more we can do on that front. But I think the writing's on the wall now and, and it's kind of unstoppable from a, from a climate perspective. It's can it happen fast enough? Back to both survey, yeah. as an entrepreneur, can you share with us what is what was your lowest point and what was your highest point in that journey, that four year journey up until now? Oh right, okay. Lowest point, I guess um spending a lot of time filling out a grant application and getting it rejected is quite low. Um, yeah, I think losing a client. No, we specific. haven't we haven't lost a client we actually. Lost a client. We've never lost a client. Um, it's been mainly high points. It's just been one of those challenges that's just been you know, some bits are really hard, some bits are easier. I, uh, yeah, there's nothing specific that, that springs to mind. But your highest point? The highest point is just looking back and knowing that we've now got clients that four years ago were completely skeptical about the value and are now signing us up year on year to do more and more of their portfolio. How critical is the team on that? My team, I've got a fantastic team. It's absolutely critical because I think not just within above, but I mean, how critical do you think is, is, is the team and the people to, to create that successful environment and yeah. bring forward yeah. that into the, the clientele? So I think having a passion for the industry you're working in. So I spent many years working in corporate land, if you like, in banking and, and law, um, something I wasn't particularly passionate about. And I can see the people that, that are working in above now have a genuine connection with the need for renewables and also a connection with the innovation of what we're doing. They're doing something that they know is, is, is unique and is, and is innovative. And I think that just motivates people so much more than you see in, in, in bigger, bigger organizations. So the dynamism that we can have and the agility that we've got to respond to a new market need or demand um, just keeps it interesting. And I think motivates people. If you could give an advice to your younger self four yeah. years ago, uh, yeah. what advice would you give? Get into an industry that you're passionate about because you can excel at it. Yeah, I, I probably started working in an industry that I was passionate about when I was 44 years old. That's a lot of working life to get to that point. Um, but I got there in the end, so. And what future holds for above? What is the next thing? So complete the fundraise, penetrate the other markets, become a, become a standard on how you do these things properly. And ultimately just delivering so much more value in what people are doing, spending money, inspecting and testing their assets, ultimately leading to a more robust industry. Yeah. Will, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate thank you. It. Cheers.